The following is brought to you by a generous donation from Canoe Place Inn and Cottages. Fine hospitality in Hampton Bays since 1697. More at canoeplace.com. Hey, it's cloudy with a slight chance of coherence, but not for very long. This is Air Hamptons with Bridget and Bill. Thanks for tolerating us. I'm the Bill part. Say hello to the Bridget part. I'm the Bridget part, and this is the Jim Turner part. Our one-man band, Jim Turner, we uh, fall for him every month, but this month we are saying fall for us because um, unbelievable as it can be, summer is in the rearview mirror. And this is our, isn't this like our two-year anniversary? Didn't we start? Did, yeah, what'd you that? get me? What's the two-year anniversary? Is it paper? <laughs> I don't I know. I think it's excuses. <laughs> Tissue paper. It's excuses. For this show. It's excuses. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just going to give you an IOU. Wouldn't that work? That'd yeah, be that's on fine. Paper. Yeah, that, like, and it nice. would also kind of be an excuse. So it is the first good, weekend good in November, or all November long, if you're watching us on LTV, yeah. uh, listening to us on LT, uh, WLIWFM. Uh, and we have a great show. We're yeah. talking about philanthropy. It's a it's a month about giving back it is. and being thankful for it that. It is. And we we're starting off with our friend, my friend. Actually, you don't know her very well at all. Julie. We met. <laughs> that doesn't make you a friend. Uh, well, I know you think you have all these friends because yeah. you've met yeah. them. It's uh -huh. not the same thing. Yeah. But um, we have not, Julie Radner from the Ellen Hermanson. Not to be confused with someone who constantly drops famous names. But <laughs> I don't even have my name dropped. maybe drop. met one time. I don't even have my name dropped jar anymore. Uh -huh. I'm, not, I'm out of that business. But, I didn't know uh, you could Photoshop your face into uh, John Lennon and Yoko you're, Ono. You're but hilarious. That, that's, uh, you're hilarious. Nobody's buying those pictures, by okay, the way. Okay, that's Leroy. fine. And no one's literally, I tried selling them and Julie, no one's buying them. Julie Ratner's here. Also, uh, Sam Pizzullo is here. Yes, I know. And he's like, he's actually, he's a friend of the James Lane Post, which is one of our sponsors. Yeah, now the exciting thing about him is that last month mm -hmm. we had the Hamptons Film Festival. Yeah. Anne was here last month. If you missed that episode, please, please, please look for it on and YouTube. And his film premiere, Pre it's premiered. premiered. That's weird to say. But yeah, it's very exciting. And it's yeah. all filmed around like Bay Street and Sagar. Bay Harbor Street Theater, like Sagar. And he was he's a huge a huge Scream fan, likes those kinds of movies. And they made a mockumentary there. Yeah. Uh, and it's looking for distribution, like everything that comes to the Hamptons Film Festival. Uh, also... We've got uh, my friend, Mike Kilcoin. And he's just... making little movies. Uh, yeah. Everybody's got a movie deal but me. Well, are, do you want one? I don't know, do I? I don't know, play your cards right and we'll see what happens. I like the, the, I like the Oh, you're not of, allowed to say that anymore, I don't think. I like the <laughs> idea of craft services every day at my Craft house. services. That would be nice. Yes, that and would maybe be somebody cool. to go get my stuff. Doesn't Mrs. McCudley cook? No, not no? really. Okay, no. so she's no. not craft services, no. okay? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, yes, of course she does sometimes. Well, for God's sakes, get DoorDash on your phone. She's Easy. got divorce lawyers on speed dial, so I have to be very <laughs> careful. Uh, yeah, okay. Mike's making little, he's a man of many talents, but he's making, with the East Hampton Star, some little motion pictures that he's going to tell us about. And no one says motion pictures anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bill McCuddy. Oh, okay. Bill McCuddy, the dinosaur, I love you. Uh, so he's, <laughs> he's making uh, kinescopes that uh, are being shown um, the zoe on tropes. a viewfinder. You just have to spin them, uh, right? Watch the horse run. <laughs> Woo, go Mike. Okay, I get it. So we're, we're doing some movie stuff and some philanthropy stuff. Yes, and it, the, the philanthropy, as we mentioned at the top, is very important yes. because uh, this is the month where we are giving thanks for everything that's happened through the year. Absolutely. So should we bring on our first As amazing as it seems, I'm very thankful that you're here. Oh, stop it. Now you're going to be nice to me when we only have like two shows left? <laughs> thanks, Bill. It's treating me like crap. I like to time. peak. I like to uh, peak thanks. late. Yeah, yeah. You, I late can tell. Late in the second yeah. half. Yeah, when you be playing, <sighs> you're playing hard to want. Hey, Julie Ratner, <laughs> welcome to uh, Air Hamptons with Bridget and Bill. I'm so glad you're here, Julie. Thanks yeah. for coming on. Thank you for having me. I'm I glad to be here. I promise to be much nicer to you. Oh, yeah. oh wow. So, yeah, he's Thank nice you. At the beginning you made my the, day. Yeah. But anyway, so, you, I mean, we were just coming out of uh, October, Breast Cancer exactly. Awareness Month, and you are the founder of Ellen Hermanson Foundation. And how long ago was that? that you Almost started? 30 years. This is our 30th year coming up. Wow. That's amazing. So, yeah. So what was the, can I just ask a couple of questions, and then you can jump in with your funny ha-ha stuff. No, I have nothing ha-ha um, about this. I'll find what, was, what was the landscape for uh, breast cancer health like 30 years ago compared to how it is now? I think it was very different. Certainly when Ellen was diagnosed in 1989, she didn't talk about it. Mm 
you know, and she was afraid it would hurt her in her job. Mm. And I remember going to different walks and events, and she really wanted to keep it quiet. Everyone yeah. did, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they didn't talk. Yeah. No one ever said the word breast, never mind breast cancer. It was almost like taboo. Right. And, and there, there weren't as many services. When I came here and started Ellen's Run, there were much fewer services out here. And um, what, are, what are some of the services that um, Ellen Hermanson has, the, your foundation, not your sister, obviously, but, but that you have um, seen grow or that you've contributed to? So I just to. want to say, yeah, yeah. what we do, I took really from Ellen's life because if I can just go back a yeah, little yeah. bit in time, Ellen was a journalist, and she was many things, but she was a journalist, and um, when she was diagnosed, she understood right away the lack of services and the, how lucky she was in a way to have family around her, to have um, be treated at Memorial Sloan Kettering. Our father was a doctor, and um, she had really excellent care, mm -hmm. and she understood so much sooner than I did how many people don't get into the system, the inequality of access to medicine. And she used to say, I think I'm like the Miss Manners of, of breast cancer, because she would talk to people about what they need and try to help them. And she used her extraordinary talent as a writer and an advocate and, and a spokeswoman. She, she worked with an organization called um, National Coalition for Cancer Survivorship, and she was the editor of their um, newsletter. newsletter. Yeah, yeah. She worked. She was the founding director of Judges and Lawyers Breast Cancer Alert, wow. which had their um, symposium the end of October. She was one of four women to find to found find the Jewish Healing Center. Three were rabbis, and then there was Ellen. And she used her talent and her compassion to really reach out to women. And she understood the importance of psychosocial support. How lonely it is to have breast cancer. How lonely it was for her. She was. Um, 36 when she was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer and she had a six month old baby and she was really she couldn't work the chemotherapy made her hugely sick we were all part of this year we all jumped in a lot of people don't have that and she understood the so that's some of the um, that's some of the services that right, you saw that we the had biggest right need away. for yeah. we, the, the, the education about the importance of self of of um self-examination, taking care of your body, because if you don't, no one will. The importance of, of access, the importance of psychosocial support. And we brought that all out here with us, which has morphed a little bit. So, so let's go back again. So 30 years ago, you're like, I'm going to start this to honor my sister, you and Emily. Who's, right. right. Who's your sister. Who, right, who passed away three years ago. Right. But yes, so we decided we would do it. I actually dragged her along at first, mm -hmm. you know, because she, she was sort of shy. And had you had experience with, like, philanthropic organizations before? Well, I or? served on a number of boards. Right, but you hadn't started one. I started never start anything. Right. And, and I had run races. I What actually happened is um, it was it was spring of 19... 96. Mm -hmm. I just defended my dissertation, and my sister-in-law told me she wanted me to meet a woman named Vivian Shapiro, and she told me how active Vivian was, how powerful she is. She was very active in the gay men's, you know, health, health crisis, center. Yeah, and yeah. Health center. And I didn't want to meet her. I thought, oh my God, I can't meet her. I'm like totally intimidated. So I met her, and we fell in love in five minutes. Oh, great. I told her about Ellen. She said, well, what are you going to do to honor her? And I said. I'm thinking about it, but I don't know. She said, well, when you're not doing this, that, and the next thing, what do you do? And I said, you know, I run in Central Park every day. I said, I run marathons. She said, great, we're going to do a run. We're going to call it Ellen's Run, and we'll do it in August. Oh, how That's fantastic. how it all was That's born how it all over began. a In three months, we or, did it, yep. And wow. how many ran on the first one, and how many did we, 500 the first, and right out of the gate? my mother said to me, yep, my mother Right said, out of the gate, literally, because yeah. that's literally what she that. But, you know, yes. we knew so little that at 6 in the morning we got there. We started, you know, to get people to give them their numbers. Right. We started packing goodie bags. Everyone arrives. We are like up the creek. So yeah. how many people now do you have, though? We had over 900 this year. Wow, that's amazing. And where do they run, for people listening that don't so know? So <laughs> we run in Southampton. We, we stage the run from the intermediate school in Southampton, and they are absolutely wonderful there. They so do everything to help us. Uh, as Julie knows, I was on a team. And I have you done ran the, on this thing? Well, let, let's just, let's not say that I exactly ran. What you I didn't did, slept. You know, you didn't have to run. Who you, carried I you? Slept. <laughs> I slept no. with my friend, Gay, right? My right. friend, Gay Campbell. And then as we got close to the, she was like, 
let's run across the finish line. We were like, like, I mean, there were people who were already in bed by that point. We were like, we like ran like this and that was it. Because that was in run. that year they didn't have Uber. Yeah, that's right. Or DoorDash. And you weren't able to have, get like, No, I wasn't able to get a ride. Guy. I know, I was, but we ran across the finish line. And somebody, it might've been you or, or someone else was like, I see what you're doing, Bridget. Like, I see you. But it's, it, it's great. It's such an amazing, um, it's such an amazing organization. It's helped so many people. Thank you. So what do you see going forward? I see in continuing what we're doing. You know, during COVID, it was an amazing time because we couldn't do anything, right? We're all stuck inside. We can't go out. And we had a new baby in the house, so I was really stuck inside. And we reconvened and we looked, we looked at our mission and we decided we could do it better. And so we just, we changed up some of what we do and created, we created community partnerships with four local women's organizations, the Retreat, Ola, Bridgehampton Child Care and Recreational Center, and Shinnecock, because we understood that these are all women who are medically at risk, who often, often aren't in the pipeline in a timely way, and who don't know that um, there are resources for them if they don't have insurance. And so um, we really have focused on that and growing these partnerships, and we hope to expand them and do more work. It's interesting because I remember growing up that it wasn't talked about. And you right. mentioned earlier, no one even said the word breast. And I'm, I'm sort of remembering though, some public service announcements that came along maybe in the 80s, where women were talking about self-examination. Is that something everyone knows how to do now, to feel for what could be growing? Not necessarily. And when we go, we did an event last year at the retreat. And we went with Dr. Koppenhaus, who's the medical director of the Breast Center, and Laura Borghardt, who was then the director of the Phillips Family Cancer Center. And we talked about it, and they bring forms, like breast forms, that have like little lumps in them, so you, and so you can know what you're feeling for. And then, of course, there's the lump you don't feel. Um, and we talk about it. And it was a fascinating day there, because Sorry. Go what ahead. we take for granted, yeah. that maybe everyone knows about self-examination or mammogram after 40, um, it's not common knowledge. Right. It's absolutely not common knowledge. Maybe among certain segments of the population, I, can, I kind of make an analogy to reading. Every year, when you get a new class going into first grade or kindergarten, you have to start teaching them the alphabet all over again. You have to start teaching them phonics. Well, with every new group of women coming of age, we have to start the process again and can't assume what women know and don't know. Yeah, that's true. And what was really interesting in 2008, the end of 2008, Bob Challoner, who was then the president and CAO of Southampton Hospital, came to us with a proposition that if we would fund a new self-contained breast center, they would name it for Ellen. So, of wow. course, we did that. <laughs> yes. And we said to him, the big shots that we are, we have two, provi two provisos that you have to do. No one's turned away because they don't have insurance. And figure out how to marry the warmth of a community where women feel safe with the rigor of a teaching hospital. And so that's all you have to do, and we'll do Oh, that. that's all. That's all. <laughs> yes, it, yeah, just easy. So what, what, what so, do they do to make true. it kind of feel cozy? Um, you know, the center, if you, I don't know if you've been to the breast center. I have I'll take you there. Okay, it, take me there. They try to make it, considering it's institutional, as spa-like as possible with soft colors, you know, like a faux wood floor with a pattern in the wood, cove lighting, pictures on the walls, yes, yeah, you know, cool. gowns that don't look like they were, you know, out of central casting for yeah. hospital gowns. <laughs> so, so, you know, so, and, and so, Within the confines of an institutional setting, they have tried to make it as, as warm and friendly as possible. That's wonderful. Yeah. Julie Ratner has joined us today on uh, Air Hamptons with Bridget and Bill. If you're just joining us, we're talking about philanthropy, and we're also talking about breast cancer awareness. Who, who came up with pink? Where did, where did that nationally come from? I think that was years ago from Evelyn Lauder. Oh, really? Do you know what that sounds like? Yeah, I don't know. We, we, we're hearing it's like Beethoven. The, I know, but it's like an angelic chorus starting. Wow. Because Jim Turner here. got much more talented. <laughs> he got he does talented Beethoven real now. <laughs> <laughs> we are in the uh, soundproof, occasionally, uh, facility called LTV, which is a witness relocation building <laughs> in the middle of uh, Wayne Scott. Exactly. Uh, Julie, it has been, I guess that was your play, uh, See Her Off music. No, no, no. Like, we're no. not playing her off like the Oscars. Uh, no, the, the the pink, which is now yeah, embraced I, I, by yeah, golfers and football and everybody. everybody. I read about this years ago. I believe it was actually Evelyn Lauder, who, right. you know, for Essie Lauder, who um, actually helped start the Breast Cancer Research Foundation because she was a breast cancer yeah. survivor till she wasn't. Right. And um, I think, and she was a wonderful photographer and artist. I believe 
somehow I think it came from her, and I could yeah. fact check that later. Oh, How are we doing, by the way? How are we doing with breast cancer just 30 years later? It's mixed. It's, you know, I'm not the scientist to talk about this. One in eight women are still being diagnosed with breast cancer. This year, I can't remember the exact figure, but a large number of women will be diagnosed. Over 200,000 women will receive a diagnosis. Over 40,000 women will die. There are new treatments that are much better. They're much more pinpointed. And, and research is always helping. So much of it, I still think, it depends on access. And access is not equitable. And part of what my foundation does with the money we raise is to try to get into the community and make it more equitable, as well as the breast center. We funded all the basic equipment in the breast center. So the breast center has tomosynthesis, which is the latest iteration of mammography. It's the most sophisticated. We have we have to catch it much earlier, and it does a much better screening. It, I could go sort of into the science of it, but it's sort of like a. Um, a, a CT scan it sort of makes little slices of the breast. It shows the architecture of the breast much better. Hmm. And unfortunately now, uh, for w women with dense breasts, the standard of care is the mammogram and a sonogram. Now sonograms aren't covered by insurance, mm -hmm. so you, have, you can decide to pay for it yourself or not. But for some women, I believe it's around two hundred dollars. That's too much money. They can't do it. You know, um, it's funny because Tom Clavin, who is sometimes our movie maven, he's not on this show, but I believe he's going to be on our December show. Um, he and I, a really long time ago, co-wrote a script called *A Quiet Victory*, and it was about a woman on Long Island who's now a dear friend, Jane Karishgat, who was the first woman who brought. She had breast cancer, and she was fired for it. And this was in the late '80s. She brought it fired all the way. For it. Took yeah. too much time off. Yeah. Well, like... no, they just they just she just fired her, and um, and she brought it all the way to the Supreme Court, and she had the ADA regulations changed to uh, the American with Disabilities Act to include breast cancer. That's a movie. Of, that, that yeah. Who can screw it. that script? Up? I wrote, <laughs> <laughs> look at here I am. Well, actually, Lifetime, I believe, paid us for it, but no, it never got made. It's really an important movie yeah. because those rights are being taken back, they're being whittled back, mm -hmm. and that's not right. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. you know, Some of that will be decided in November when we elect a new president because there this are two is choices November, there. So yeah. It's already happened, maybe. Maybe, yeah. But okay, on the I everybody. Go well, there. The I, mean, I have a lot to say, but I think... I know. Uh -huh. Well, Julie, thank you so much for joining us. The Ellen Hermanson Foundation is one of our great philanthropic organizations out here. You are a pistol, a dynamo, and oh a gosh, dear friend, you. and I'm so I glad to have you here. I love being here. Thank you for having me, and I love talking about the foundation. Pretty in yes. pink, Julie Ratner, if you're listening to this, you. uh, if you can see it on LTV, you know that already. Hey, uh, <laughs> switching gears dramatically, Jim Turner, how about some crazy kind of scream music, something scary? Have you got anything uh, sure like do. haunted? I was just about to do spooky. Not that, but I got one for you. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> From a facility in East Hampton where realtors like to say you can walk to the beach if you're Gandhi, this is Air Hampton with Bridget and Bill. Uh, and uh, joining us next is a filmmaker. A yeah. filmmaker, but the last Broadway! one. Broadway! Oh, uh, okay. and, and. Thank you, Jim Turner. Jim, Jim Turner is ready to we do the soundtrack you. for just about anyone's movie. <laughs> yeah, called and that Jim was an Turner. audition for uh, Sam Pizzullo. Yeah, Sam. Sam, I'm so glad you're here. It's so uh, You look awesome Hollywood. People listening to this uh, on WLIWFM <laughs> yeah. can't see that you're wearing kind of some denim. And yeah. a baseball cap like and, and, Spielberg. And dark glasses. And dark glasses because but... he was out partying that hard last night. Oh, time. yeah, I'm sure. It's true. We <laughs> were celebrating the sale of our film. Really? No, just kidding. Oh, Hopefully. God. <laughs> no, I got super excited no, for you. So Stay the Hamptons Film Festival was last month, but it must feel like just yesterday. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there was so much anticipation and lead up to the festival. Uh, and then it just happened so quickly, but it was such a memorable week. And okay, uh, so tell people what experience premiere. Never premiere forget. is your movie. It's called Premiere, and it premiered uh, last month. And what? you've been wait, you've been working with this for a while because we did a story on in James Lane Post. I remember like two years ago on this, right? Yes. And now this. So, well, as you know, you it's a it. it's a major motion picture. Of course, we like it to is. use those terms. So yeah, nice. these major things motion these picture. things take time. Uh, we started working on a minor on it. television and radio just show right now, right just right just to put it into perspective. Zoe Trope here at the bottom. We're Eddie in the press. middle. Yeah, okay. Eddie Press is good press. Okay. So yeah. Um, 
So we started working on the original concept uh, almost three years ago, actually, next month in December right. of 2021. Myself and my friend and co-director, Miles, kind of had this idea. Um, and then we realized we actually had the resources, both you know, equipment-wise and access to talent, to create really like a, a version of the idea, a, a short form version, a proof of concept, if you will. Um, because the I had sizzle. just taken like exactly, could, right, right, right. Right. I had just taken this uh, improv acting class at Bay Street Theater, and I met uh, a group of wonderful, talented performers. And he had all the equipment and the means to shoot it. So we decided, let's just shoot for a few days like, and see what kind of material we come up like with. Like a like a Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney movie, yeah. right? We've got a barn, and you know, let's put on. Not a the first time movie. I've been compared to Judy Garland. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not the last. Oh yeah, let's um, keep that well, going. Well, congratulations. Anyway. Yeah. So then, <laughs> what was this little like seed of an idea? Uh, we created like a five minute sizzle uh, trailer and we released it on YouTube. And it was also sort of intended at the time to promote Scream 5, which was coming out. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, the, tell people what tell the idea is. Yes. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Right. So, well, you're just the, assuming it's already a huge, exactly. like, a smash I mean, hit. Yeah, if you don't knows. know, now you know. But yes. I'm okay. sure everyone watching has heard all no, about it. Tell us about it, Sam. Um, so, it's called the premiere and uh, it was originally called Scream the Musical, the movie. Right. But essentially, it's, it's a mockumentary about making a documentary about me trying to make a musical about Scream, which is my favorite movie. So yeah. there are many layers of inception and it's a very complicated meta self-referential uh, narrative, but, but the at, overall but the premise. Sorry, I was thinking, but at the heart of it is a very successful, funny, funny idea you know, from the producers, which is, of course has springtime for Hitler. And did you ever see The Tall Guy with Jeff Goldblum? Yeah, that's great. It's a, no, I haven't. Brilliant see film. That. See it. It's about a, 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 a it's about an actor who gets cast as the Elephant Man in a musical version of the Elephant Man. <laughs> uh, and so, it, so anything I'm where people at the right because so anything sure it's that it, that I think is part of the kind of the the public um, zeitgeist, I guess. And then you take it and you, you make fun of it. and You get a little kick in the ass. That's always going to get a laugh. So tell yeah. us a little bit about about this the premiere. Right. So um, the the overall premise is that um, it takes place in Sag Harbor and it's set in in the real world, so to speak. And everyone in it plays a, a version of themselves. Um, it, it's sort of focused on me playing a much more delusional. <laughs> egomaniacal, narcissistic version of me, oh, an sure. aspiring <laughs> producer, and uh, my attempt to create this musical version of the horror movie Scream at Bay Street Theater, and sort of the trials and tribulations of that process, and all the different people who I meet and interact with in town uh, in my quest to make this musical. But beyond the musical, I'm also acknowledging the fact that it's being filmed for a documentary about the making of the musical, which wow. then becomes sort of the, the main focus of the film in the second half, and it all culminates with the premiere. So many layers. The film about the musical, yeah. <laughs> oh but it's really a really satirical, dry comedy on both, you know, the entertainment business and the idea of like delusion and, and right. ego and also the Hamptons. It's uh, really a love letter to the community as well. And because no, all here? of- I'm sorry. I'm not originally from here. I'm from I two mean, hours north. I mean, delusion and ego in Hamptons is practically you know. a documentary. Yeah, you just completely, yeah. yeah just, one to know just throw I'm in here. some $100 <laughs> <laughs> lobster salad and, you know, exactly. everybody would know where you were. Exactly. Um, um, yeah. But I spent uh, a lot of time here uh, growing up and then moved here full time during the pandemic. Um, Oh, I wanted to ask you something else, and it's just completely. How did James oh, no, Lane Post never, weasel its way? Yeah, into how did this James? Movie. No, first of all, oh, yeah, let's do that, and then I'll ask you right. another question. So, what was the question again? Sorry. So James, James Lane Post, Lane Post. Uh, one of our sponsors, yes. features is featured sort of prominently. And I am, I am co-publisher and editor yes. at large. So yes. Well, as I say in the film, we love James Lane Post. We love Jessica. I've had a great uh, friendship and relationship with Jessica and Christine, Jessica for and, years. and Christine for years. Yes, uh, and so there was an opportunity to incorporate a local publication into the plot of the film in a pretty significant way, without spoiling anything for like people the Courtney who haven't Cox. seen it character in the in the movies or like the no, journalist or the No, not 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 no. There was no there was no uh like character. <laughs> like, no, I got no, no, no transition yeah, for that. No, no, I can't help just, you Bill. No, Bill. Yeah. No. You're no. totally just, wrong. Just let yeah. it just right. let it drop. No, Wouldn't but the, there was an opportunity for us to include um a, a local newspaper publication into the narrative in a really funny way and then also include Jessica 
uh, as a version of herself. Um, again, I don't want to like no, give no, no, away no, too I'm much so of the plot because I, it's like, actually kind of an gets, important. Is there slashing involved in this? Is well, that means can I, get can I back or up? We're not allowed to say that. I have to back up. Uh, I've 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 never seen Scream, and I have no idea oh. what it's about at what? all. Oh, you've never so, seen Scream? No, uh, wow. none of them. And I have everybody in this room is looking at me like I am an alien. Like literally, <laughs> we have a wall of people over there who are if all I shaking was, their heads. If I was wearing a microphone right now, I'd rip it off and I'd storm off the set. We've never had a walk up. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. Wizard of Oz, 11,244 times, Scream Zero. <laughs> yeah. You know, and your viewer I'm not good with died. I'm not good with horror movies, usually. Uh, so, so what was really what unique about, about Scream, I mean, it, it came out in 1996, and it was directed by Wes Craven, who was right. famous for Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Um, but Which I also haven't seen, Scream but yes. was <laughs> kind of a hybrid. It was a slasher film, and it was scary. But it was also really like campy and sharp, okay. and it was also very character driven. It was more about these characters um, involved in this scenario. I mean, and clearly, it's successful. Was, if there's like 25 of them now, so I get it. They're working on the seventh. Okay, well, but then close I, enough. I tend to but embellish. She's but bad with continue. Math. The other thing that um, there's sort of a parallel between our film and Scream. It's 25 in Costa Rica. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Exchange um, rate. So anyway, yes. So the, the other parallel is that Scream itself was also considered very meta and self-referential because the the plot really did revolve around scary movies and, and okay. the characters involved in Scream were acknowledging kind of the legacy and the history of other scary movies and how that was impacting the the narrative of Scream wow. and the killer's motives. Oh, I want to go then home and in see in the it second now. and third and Congratulations, 40 years later. In the <laughs> continuing films in the franchise, yeah. they make, essentially in the second film, we learn that they've made a film about yeah. the events of the first film okay, called gotcha. Stab. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, so that was really like one of our big inspirations for creating our film, which right. had a film within the film, because gotcha. Scream also has a film within the universe right. of Well, I'm glad I, I fessed up. I outed myself as a Scream a neo, a newbie. So thank you. But it's thank worth you. Worth speaking, watch. speaking of influences yes. and speaking of inspiration, you have a regular day job. So I people do. listening that, that have always wanted to make a movie. Oh, I thought you were going to say who always wanted to make a reservation. <laughs> <laughs> where and I, I yeah. where can say, we find nope. you most? Okay. That's where I draw the line. It's one of the hottest, <laughs> res uh, yeah. hottest restaurants in the Hamptons. Oh, okay, great. But uh, people listening to this who, who have a regular job but have an idea for a movie, I mean, it's. First of all, you said three years at least in the, in the yeah. and there's a lot that goes into, we don't want to make it seem like this is anybody can do it, but uh, you are an inspiration and sort of a poster guy for the Hamptons Film Festival, having lived here and worked here and now made a movie here. So what's the one piece of advice you tell people when they're getting started about where they need to start? Well, no one's ever asked me for advice, Phil, so... Um, <laughs> Join the club, say, my friend. Um, <laughs> Just offer it anyway. That's I what I I would say, do. you know, I've always found that, you know, truth is stranger than fiction, and, and it's always sometimes easiest and most authentic to just, like, capture what's right in front of you or design something that inspires you, but use the people and the places around you as inspiration because they're oftentimes like the most accessible and it becomes the most logistically feasible to actually make something materialize. So I was very fortunate that while I do have a pretty demanding nine to five or rather five to nine <laughs> job in hospitality working right. at Tuto, Il Giorno and Sag Harbor, um, I had so much support and um, generosity from the community to help me make this. And we really relied heavily on that support system and we'll talk people about in the that community. Because people don't know how to raise money for movies. Yeah. So how much did you have to raise and how did you do it? Yeah, well we raised money in stages. So we relied um, heavily on crowdfunding. So we did an initial campaign on a platform called Seed and Spark, which yeah. is wonderful. I would highly recommend it. I think for I anyone. went on and made a donation right in the I beginning because we it. did that. Well then story your name's you. in the credits. Yeah. yeah, right. That's why special <laughs> thanks special, Jason Hour and a half. Thanks. Movies yeah. It's a capital three columns it's a capital R in Leroy. Just don't get that wrong. <laughs> or it has to be two words. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> so we did a we did an initial round of crowdfunding, and I was naive at the time, and I thought you know thirty five thousand dollars would be enough to make this, and it turns out it wasn't. So then, um, with with the material that we were able to capture using that initial round of financing, we were able to create an asset that we then shared with potential the investors. Right, right. And this was actually long after oh. the initial sizzle. Oh, this okay. was more of like an investment um, asset. Okay, cool. Same and, cast in the short and what ended up being the feature? Yes. Uh -huh. um, 
And so then we were able to get some private investment. And then we also did another round of um, crowdfunding on Indiegogo for finishing funds. We had some brand sponsorship kind of product placement wow. deals. Like it a lot it, of it work, took a though, lot huh? of um, resources and like exploring different financing avenues. But we ultimately made it for a very, very, very small amount of money, like under $150,000, wow. which for a feature film and one that um, – is sort of complex in, in scope. Um, is uh, how many shooting I'm days? Very proud of. Uh, I couldn't even count because it was shot over the course of several years. But <laughs> I would say at least seventy five different like individual wow. shoot Set days. Ups. Set ups. Yes. Set ups. Yeah, right. And, <clears throat> but going back to relying on the community, I mean, so many local businesses were um, generous and let us shoot there for free. Whether <laughs> LTV, we shot, oh, I think I did pay them. But <laughs> well, they were one of the few that had a location fee that I was happy to pay because it was also like, you know, it was discounted. A, it's phil well, it's but, philanthropic. And yeah, we were happy to. This is a to. nonprofit, yes. which brings us back to the, right. what we're but supposed to talk Sagtown about. Sagtown Coffee, Bay yes. Street Theater, yes. the church, Tuto, several restaurants all allowed us to film at these locations. And the people who worked there, you know, agreed to appear in the film as characters of themselves. So going back to what I said about, you know, creating something around the people who are, are there to support you, it, it makes it possible. So this yeah. was a non-union? Um. It was a non-union, but we actually did include a few um, SAG actors, and we, we were able to get sign-off from SAG Matt actors. Hartley so it's like we're a signatory. So right. the, the oh, SAG cool. actors who do appear in it did so, you know, According to Original their guidelines. music. I mentioned Jim Turner at the top of the of the segment, but like, yes. what did you do for a soundtrack? Um, we don't have a soundtrack, but we were very, very lucky to get a wonderful, talented musician uh, named Jamie Gelman, along with um, her collaborator and a friend of mine, Nicholas DePriest, to record, write, and record an original song for the end credits. Is there is there is, gore? Is there like gore? Did you need? No, there isn't any. No, it okay. is extremely dry, kind of cringe comedy. It's okay. it's sort of comparable to like Best in Show or Waiting for Guffman okay, in that, right, in that right. sense. Right. This but is there is a death. Right. No, I was is, thinking about Spinal yes, Tap, of course. Yeah. There is a plot twist and there is a death. I'll leave it at that. Okay. But the other really important, <laughs> unique thing is that all the dialogue was improvised, much like this Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Oh, oh no, no, we, we wrote we, all this we, Yeah, we, we, I know, we've I been rehearsing notes. for <laughs> hours before you got <laughs> I here, I see Sam. my name spelled wrong. Yeah, I know. Well, we're talking to Sam Pizzullo, or as uh, or Paluzzo if you are a dyslexic, um, <laughs> about his film, The Premiere, which I am premiered dyslexic. last month. So what was the response? To rave reviews. Yes, what, what has the response been like? Um, well, it's been... The response that night was overwhelmingly positive. I mean, granted, it was a lot of now, was friends and family and people in the community who know me and the <laughs> other people involved. Was so it at Bay Street? It was actually at Guildhall. Oh, okay. We had so our opening night at Guildhall, which, you know, the um, Legendary. the importance of that and is not lost on me. And I'm right. so grateful to the entire programming team right. at HIF, especially David Nugent and Kristen McCracken and... I also want to mention a couple of my other colleagues, Carol Blankman and Amy Levin Schaefer, who have all been so supportive of this film and helped to make that moment possible at We'll Guild edit Hall. that out, but, no, but the important thing, no. We're still, well, but I do want to ask also, I mean, will this play in Peoria? That's the question. I mean, yeah, obviously it, in it, the Hamptons. Is it too hamptons -y or is it universal in terms of what? what I mean, will this, ha if this ha gets a... I don't when know what Peoria is. Well, it's Peoria, <laughs> Illinois. The, I, that's what they always used to say oh, in the movie business is, will oh, this play in Peoria? I hope to will God this, it plays in Peoria. But I mean, they'll get the references, everything. It isn't too, um, I think, you know, Well, I think esoteric. it definitely um, will uh, appeal to people from this community, and it'll resonate with them in a, a very kind of specific way, and mm -hmm. there will be things that only they can appreciate. Right, of course. They're not going to look at the screen and go, tutu or giorno, but, I'm lost. No, yeah, <laughs> but no. What is that? What, the, what is that? No, I hope that we've, we've kind of, we kind of transformed Sag Harbor into our own little universe, and it's, it's more about the kooky kind of quirky characters in these scenarios mm -hmm. and not about where they are. So hopefully the humor and the plot will resonate with people all over the, the world, but okay. especially with local people. Well, Before we great. let you go, how important is a festival like the Hamptons Film Festival? Oh, I mean, you cannot underestimate the importance of this type of event for filmmakers and artists, whether it's a film festival or an, an art festival. I mean, these types of events give independent creators an opportunity to share and showcase their work 
with audiences. Um, Did you always think you'd be in the festival? When you were making the movie, were you thinking, boy, it'd be great to be in the Hamptons Film Festival, but I don't well, know. Well, I'd be lying if I said I didn't think about it, because there's actually a scene in the film where my character is trying to get the film within the film into the festival. <laughs> so oh yes, God, that was so always confused. was always part of like the Does the Nugent get plan. strangled? Nugent, no. <laughs> Nugent is, uh, is glorified in this film. No film I, festival officials were harmed in the making of this film. No. Okay. No, uh, but, you know, to quote my, my good friend uh, Stephanie Germanata, Lady Gaga, you know, mm -hmm. I, I always say there can be 100 people in the room and 99 of them don't believe in you and all it takes is one person to believe in you and I feel that David in particular really championed the film oh, and, and gave us wonderful. this opportunity and film festivals are crucial and... Uh, yeah, we're excited to see uh, what other festivals we might get into or what type of... Um, there are some niche ones that are just yeah, for horror. your well, category. Not horror, but for mockumentaries. Improv, yeah. Comedy. Yeah, anything. yeah, absolutely. We're exploring right. all of that, and we hope that it, um, you know, piques the interest of a, a distributor. I would love to have a, a small theatrical release and then eventually have it on a streaming platform. I just want to share it with as many people as possible. And I have one last question. Any word from Wes Craven? Well, from the from the beyond, no. <laughs> well, any word, word oh, from his like I his wish people I would have to sit from, with. I'd have to world. go back to Amagansett and yes. sit with Psychic Lauren to, yes. yeah, to hear right. from Wes Craven. But um, <laughs> right, but I mean, but like from the people involved with Scream. Any, not any yet, word? but um, I have am. You sent kind of, it to to the. Yeah, have they seen it? Do you have any it? idea? Um, well, I have not received no any sort of cease yet. and desist no, no, no. or like you know <laughs> Lucky you. legal action yet. Yeah. Um, what about next? What do you what do you got? What's bouncing around in that uh, Pizzullo head? Well, <laughs> when you see the film, you'll you'll see that it ends with sort of a cliffhanger. Yeah, Pizzullo oh. head. That's very um, funny. Yeah, Pizzullo head. I like that. <laughs> you can't see my head. Yeah. Back when I walked in and they said, "Are you here for Air Hamptons?" I thought she said Hair Hamptons. I thought, oh, <laughs> like shit. <laughs> I'm wearing a hat today. You can't. I mean, no, that's My fine. best You're feature is not even Hair on Hamptons, display. Air Hamptons. Air Hamptons. And I'm wearing that, the sunglasses. That's a different show. Bear Hamptons. That's like, in, like that's in the next studio. Oh, I've been to the next studio, by the way. Gene Schaffer off does your hair it's, it's yeah. lovely you'll enjoy it but no, i haven't heard from paramount or yeah. spyglass but um there you go spyglass that's what i meant yeah no, they're the good. company that now owns like the the scream right. franchise right. but paramount is the distributor but hey, we a, hope a that lawsuit um, would be the best thing that can happen to it, it <laughs> from Stop. your mouth to god's ears it's free publicity yeah it's right. just piss someone off i'll see you in court <laughs> and then in a multiplex yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sam. Thanks, it's been Sam. wonderful Having to have you. This Sam has been Zulo, so much fun. The premiere, look for it in your local theaters or wherever you can stream. Eventually, we hope, we're putting it out there into the universe. And yeah, and watch. follow at the premiere film on Instagram oh. for updates. At, okay. At, at the, the premiere, premiere film. Oh. Right. All right. The at being the little, the little. The little, ampersand. it's not an ampersand. There's another word no, for No, I it. know. I can't remember. The World what, Wide Web symbol. Does anybody know what that's Ash, called? At, no, at. At, at <coughs> the premiere film. film. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank Great you. Great having you on. Jim Turner, play what should have been the end credit music for premiere. <laughs> no pressure. Looks like I got them old haunted house blues, Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Air Hamptons with Bridget and Bill, and we are talking Yahoo! about yeah. things we fall for. And uh, philanthropy was one thing we discussed. Well, can uh, I, I also wanted to ask you, actually, what are your plans for Thanksgiving? Do you have Thanksgiving plans? We have a crowd of noisy people yeah, just guys. like the uh, studio here. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, we, we have... Um, Thank you, Jim Turner. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Do you have Thanksgiving plans? Uh, yeah, we, we're going... Uh, it sounds bougie. We're going down to the Bahamas. No, I'm, I'm going to Greece. The, the birthplace. I'm going to Greece, okay, my friend. Okay, you so, and I'm The meeting, show? No, I'm going <laughs> to Greece, and I'm spending Thanksgiving with the Peruvian shamans, the Caro... Pachacuti, Mesa oh, well, yeah, Carriers. Well, sure, we've done you know, that. That's, that's a, I like to be That just got old. Yeah. No, we're going we to the Bahamas, Bahamas where, where, the, where you know, this country was born. Yeah. <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> Are you really going At to the Bahamas? At the Atlantis. <laughs> well, you and the Mrs. and uh, We have a family trip coming up Oh, that's so there. nice. Didn't yeah. you just, like, in October, weren't you, like, in Marrakesh? I was. Jeez, Louise. Was. You're, but, you're, see, I get all the guff for being the world traveler here. You travel just as much as I do, Mr. Mecca. Not first class like you. Oh, yeah, right. First class on JetBlue. They throw the food. Did you see, like last month, JetBlue stopped serving hot meals on their planes. It's only cold now. 
You know the the camel rides in Morocco? Yeah. That's how I got everywhere. That's how low budget my <laughs> okay. thing was. You win. Okay. You win, my friend. So hey. who do we have next? Well, Michael uh, Kilcoin is here. He's been a guest on yes. our show before. Michael, yeah. welcome. And uh, it is kind of apropos that we're talking about movies and yeah. last month's film festival because he has teamed up with uh, a, a newspaper here, the East Hampton Star. Oh, you looked scared to say it in front of me for a minute. Cause, <laughs> well, that's where I did my time, you know, the East Hampton Star. That's yeah. where I started. Oh, uh, oh, we can't mention a paper you haven't been uh, I know. associated I've got, with. I've got like my EGOT. Jeez. I seriously have. I'm the star. I've worked for the press. I've yeah. worked for dance papers. And, and I'm co-owner of the, and I started The Independent. You can, so I got a five. You can walk anywhere in the Hamptons, stare down, and you have run them all into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I think I've been run into the ground. But anyway, Mike. Uh, we digress because that's what we do. They're still standing, though. Yeah, Welcome to our Hamptons. Right? So hey, tell us what you're, yeah, what are you up to? What do am you? I up to? Um, so I partnered with the East Hampton Star. to. So a, a thing I noticed was that a lot of business owners around here, they have really interesting stories, but often they're not told in a very compelling way. So... I partnered with the East Hampton Star and, you know, and a couple of their clients to basically like tell these stories. And, you know, the, some of the, the pieces are directed by um, Adam Donald, who's, you know, he's directed like ad campaigns for Walmart and blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. Um, so in other words, real people, yeah, real, right. real yeah. not like, not like us schmoes who are sitting here. Exactly. Yeah. And, and not I, a I actually have a clip. Of, of you do? I, I brought I brought a clip. Can can, can, can we, we play can we it? Oh, we can play yeah. and we'll describe it to people I listening. Listen to so here's what, can you want to set it up? Can, yeah. So uh, it's it's a clip of the 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 thing that we shot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good. 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 Really good. Is that good Whoa. enough? Whoa. Set, Whoa. Set, set a good setup. Up? All right. Blue okay. my mind. Here we go. What's up, Air Hamptons? Mike Hillcoin here. <laughs> and I like. Long walks on the beach, wearing diapers, and uh, several week old Reese's peanut butter cups. Although I guess they last a lot longer than a few weeks. Hi, Bill. Question for you. What are you gonna do when Bridget's gone and you don't have uh, your partner to just like actively troll, you know, what are you gonna do? That's my question for you. Yeah. Uh, Bridget, sad to see you go. Uh, hope you enjoy Costa Rica. Um, hope it's amazing. Uh, you know, birds flying into your window. That's, that's, you're gonna see a lot of that, all right? See you guys. Appreciate you. Wow. And, the, and for those of you who are listening, the production value is unbelievable. unbelievable. And unbelievable. He was sitting in a car. And if you're listening, I'm pretty sure about an hour ago. Yeah. Based on the clothes <laughs> well, you're wearing there and the clothes you're wearing. You, know, you got me. Yeah. You got me. You know, I thought it was going to be something real. So yeah. the East Hampton Star is paying for this? Yeah, so it's a lot. A lot. Yeah, Thank yeah, yeah, yeah. you, David. Yeah. So just an obscene... Um, um, but oh that's an God. example of, you know, sort of the production quality that, that, that we now, put Now, seriously, you're shooting some of these just on, on <laughs> cell phones and stuff? No, no, no. No, you, you can well, see, a lot like. Of people are. He did that to la make us laugh. Yeah, yeah I, I did I that because it's just a fun. It that, for that, me. that was a little funny yeah, yeah. gag, a little adorable. spoof, as that's, they call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, kind, of, kind of like when we were talking with Sam about, about the premiere. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I basically, I was like, man, he's probably going to have some good spoofs. I got to have some good spoofs. Right. Um, <laughs> you actually went out to the parking lot and shot your own mockumentary in I the last shot. 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could we play the other clip? No. And can I just say, every penny is on the screen. Oh, every penny. You can tell. Which is like four pennies. No, 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 but you can see it it's on the east hampton star website it's like on the bottom of well like who have you done so far yeah, yeah, tell, tell us about uh, it. talk for real about one it. one finished uh east hampton gardens michael gianelli and you know and he was basically just talking about his story of you know how he always felt like an outsider and you know he, gardening for him was a way of just like healing and so you know we we captured his story and like his beautiful i don't know if you've been there but east hampton gardens no but these are, this is a great example of things you drive by all the time and you don't yes. know anything about who started it and when how long it's right. been here and whether it's a real family business or they just named it that or et cetera et cetera et cetera uh bill collage is doing a series like this at uh, sag harbor theater too right the, the yeah. things they do the that little shorts right. before the so well, this know, is very thumbs, popular i mean those, it's a cool idea my my nephew sam hamilton 
is the one who films those. Yeah, oh, really? yeah, yeah, and the, oh. those are they're really good. Yeah, yeah. They're I mean, good. he's yeah. the cinematographer on yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. They're they're fantastic. An editor. Yeah. Um, what so, else are you up to? Yeah. Well, last time we had you on, we were talking about how exactly. Last time you were on, <laughs> what am I up to? We were well, talking about how to life. How to life. So the first episode of that, I are think, you winning? I, I think is on LTV. So can can okay. we show? A can we roll that clip? No, no, you, no, there's no kidding. Kidding. <laughs> you suddenly everybody uh, in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah um, like what? We, uh, no, um, I think it's on LTV right now, airing. Okay. Uh, can I either confirm? Thanks or for letting me know, deny buddy. Deny that. Uh, oh, you're on well, this episode? No, I oh. just wanted to know. Well, now you know. Friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, se- I'll send you the... In fact, there's the... a very weird, like, a circuitous, like, connection here, because the last time I saw you, we were in the city um, yes. at the business thing. We sat together in where Galley Mayer was one of the speakers, Georgetown. Yes. who's one of my best friends. Yeah. And I just saw Galley uh, last month at a... Um, uh, a speaker thing, and I'll just put in a word. Galley is one of the owners of Tudo, and she also has a company called Buena Vida Specialty Coffee, yes. which I work with in Costa Rica, where she helps uh, over 500 small to medium farms uh, become regenerative and organic and uh, kind of collects their coffee and brands it and sells it. So get your Kiss the Ground coffee. Get your coffee. I could use a yeah. coffee after yeah. that explanation. Coffee. I know, I know. So boring. I'm yeah. always so boring. You're going to be one so glad great, to see the back one, no, of me, I'm aren't not. you? One yes, of the great, you are. How do you look in a wig, by the way? I could get uh, you back on this show. Let's do it. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. Do you have one? of the great things about LTV is we have like a uh, vending machine with guests in the uh, <laughs> in the kitchen. And we can with just guests, we just like a with guest it, vending we, machine. But you need yeah. exact change. That's yeah. the only yeah. problem. Yeah. You get a really good guest yeah. otherwise. Yeah, for I mean, me, you know, it's like four cents. But also, like when the guest gets stuck halfway down, you try to get your arm you up there. Yeah. Oh, you shake it. Oh, you shake it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and you get two guests. That's the best. Yeah, yeah. I'm the one that's like at the bottom, and somebody's like, ah. Yeah, I'm no, saying, like, everything else has been, like, picked out. I mean, no, seriously, like, of all the people we could have had twice on this show, and it's Mike Kilcoyne. Right, like, exactly. Really, I'm so glad really Sam is gone, because we're not really good at improv. There. No, we're yeah. not. <laughs> we need him. We, we need we, Sam we, to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but anyway, should so, we do, like, a, you know how in movies they'll do, like, the cowboy swap, where, like, you, you like, in, in the middle of, like, a... They'll do like an action sequence, and then the real actor will pop in at the end. Yes, right, oh, right. right. <laughs> like, like it's called stunt, stunt double. Right. Stunt, like double. stunt double. Yeah. No, it's like literally called like a cow, cowboy, cowboy swap. Thing. That's a term. It's Never like a, something that. like that. Yeah, oh. I might have just made that up. Right I now, did not but. know that. No, no that you could have convinced us. But that so anyway, great. so wait, let's go back to what you're doing. Yeah. You, you, yeah. Who's on your wish list? Who do you want to get? Um. I, I was talking to martyrs. That they ultimately said no right now. Oh. Right now. So. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, you know, eventually, you know. But uh, oh, 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 I'm working okay. with Guildhall. Um, you know, I'm working with the Jewish Center. I'm working, you know, right, like yeah. I'm flying to Denver at the end of the month. For a What's client. a business out here that we should, that he should yeah. do? Yeah. Um, you, know, you know who you should do is uh, yes. Patrick McLaughlin. Patrick. Yeah, okay. that would be yes. great. Yes. He's because he is he is sitting here. <laughs> he's chatty. And um, he's been making uh, he's been making these videos with Tom Kelly, the comedian Tom Kelly. Cool. Yeah. Who's okay. a yeah. Long Island, uh, been, been a guest on our weekend yeah, live been show. Fun. Yeah, uh, they've been fun. But um, I'm trying to think some businesses. I mean, I think something like Loaves and Fishes would be really interesting. Okay. Uh, just because they have Where's a long that money history. Going? Yeah, 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 yeah. It will, but also I mean idea. how they started and how they built up, um, and then yeah. also having the Bridgehampton Inn. Now I think that would, that's a really interesting story. Yeah. Um, maybe Bobby maybe, Vans. Maybe. Bob what Vance, about, what about, that would, yeah. be, that would be a really good one. Yeah. And uh, what are some other, like, old, long-standing... Oh, Jim Turner has his yes. hand in the air. Yes, Jim. I've got a great idea for Yes, one. please. Me. Oh, <laughs> I knew that was coming. Ooh. Oh, man. Okay. Well, speaking of Jim, Sorry. and he would be great, but what about the um, the place in Amagansett that sells vinyl and, and CDs? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Inner Sleeves. The CD, the CD Inner and Sleeves. vinyl Sleeves. shop. Inner Sleeves yeah. Records. Jody has a hat. Inner, Inner Sleeves, Sleeve. yeah, right, that, right. that place Inner is... Inner Sleeve Records. Yeah, it's got wow. a... Uh, it's that. got a cult following of people who, you know, yeah. this is vinyls making this huge you know comeback. Yeah. Stephen Talkhouse. People are buying Steven. turntables. Yeah. And not to go, yeah. Ur, 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 yeah. um, but to actually listen to, which I can't hear. And you know what's another one? Bookhampton, because it's been around for a really long time. Yes. Like some of those really long standing businesses. What about Gubbins? Is she still open? Barbara Gubbins? Oh, yeah. So she's been around for a really long we time. We just lost I a famous go- book show. A book show. Oh, what's yeah. Gubbins? Which one's Gubbins? Canyon. Sag Harbor. 
Kenio's. Yeah, Kenio's is closed last month. I love how this becomes like an like it's yeah. I know we've got we've got like suggestions popping out from the peanut gallery. Like what else we got? You better get special thanks on the next one. You will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, Mike, it's been great having you. So, so are you like in it for a particular amount of episodes? Like, are we to expect six of these, or is it kind of just like infinite? Infinite. Infinite. As many as people will hire us for. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, like, I, I view it as um, as many as people will hire me for, basically. Yeah. 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 Okay, so, great. yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you know, it's just well, like a fun thing that we do. Is it on the East Hampton Star website? Yes. Okay, yeah, so yeah, we can see you, the, East, you, the East Hampton Gardens. If you Google. EastHamptonStar.com. East, yes. I or think, EHStar.com. I think EHStar.com. Yeah, yeah. You go to, like, I the bottom of their articles, you'll see the little thing. It'll start playing. Yeah, it's uh, already a ton of people have seen it, like. Michael That's Coyne is an East Hampton star. He is <laughs> at the East Hampton Star publication, making short films about people all over the Hamptons. And our own Patrick McLaughlin may get his close up. Oh yeah, yeah. I think he's so. ready. He's ready for his close up. Yes. Well, yeah, let's. He'll he'll you, give you Mike. he'll give you the dirt on selling dirt out here because Sweet. he's yeah. uh, he's the top realtor at Douglas Elliman. Yeah, and also he has says, Ham- I don't know and right, right, that's from yeah. his, the horse's mouth, so to speak. But he also has Hamptons Chatter. Yeah, that's right. Ooh, ooh, can, can, can I add one last thing? Oh, yeah. please. Uh, if anyone Not today. Could, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no, 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 <laughs> come on. You're done. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, I also host a breakfast club every week. Oh, I've eight, seen that. 8.30 a.m. Breakfast club. You go to Breakfast Club Hamptons on Instagram, you can come hang out. It's just chill, ooh, chill I've seen vibes. you had some cool people Oh, wait, people so that's there. like yeah, a Zoom that's, that's cool. like a Zoom room or a chat room? No, no. Like a, it's in pers- person. In person. Oh, it's like, yeah. it, it's an IRL Zoom. <laughs> in real life Zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in wait, case I, I don't know, know how that works. What do you mean it's in real life? Well, like you get together. You know, like you back in the day together. when people okay, used to like get together and like in person. Where do you do the We meet at Tuto Cafe. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which so. Buena Vita specialty coffee, yes, the which best coffee. Also, and now yeah. you can subscribe to it. Are you getting paid for this? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I paid <laughs> her like a lot of money, like an obscene no, yeah, amount. No, of no, kiss like, the ground coffee. I'm not kidding. They've started a subscription service to yeah. support these farmers. Better than Java in Bridgehampton. So, uh, I don't want to say anything bad about any local companies. It's organic, it's regenerative, and it it, it pays a, a living wage to the farmers. It's good. I'm very it's passionate about coffee it. Coffee is very regenerative. Yeah. 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 It goes right through me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank yeah, you. There you go, Mike. Uh, Great to see you. Good to see you guys. And thanks to our namaste. other guests. We had Sam Pulu. Yeah, namaste. Yes. Not, namaste away, as <laughs> some of my friends say. Um, and we had Safe Sam Pulu on talking yeah. about... You're looking at me like I'm a crazy person. No, well, I have not had. Why would that look be different than any other time on this show? (laughs) Maybe it's just like when you smile at me. I'm so not used to it. I think you're you're humoring me. We hope you will fall for us again next month. And we uh, have Julie Ratner at the top Uh, talking about Ellen Hamilton. The great, the lovely Julie Ratner. She is so lovely and wonderful. Um, One of my dear friends. By the way, Jim Turner giving his business card to. Uh, Yeah, he's like, do me, do me. Just a lovely. It's been such a great show, and. Hey, what are you thankful for this year? What am I thankful for? Well, I'm always thankful for you, Bill, that I only have to see you a couple of times a month. She's drugged. She's uh, been drinking. No, I (laughs) no, I have not been drinking. That is a good thing. But um, yeah, I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful for everything in my life. I mean, I spend my all day, even when things are going kind of hard, I spend my whole day like thinking of the things I'm grateful for: my health, my family. People will be traveling all over the world to go to somebody's family uh, this Thanksgiving. You're you said in passing you're going to Greece. What I am. Is the... I'm going to Greece with Jaguar Path, my friends Ray and Nina Christ. They're hosting the uh, Andean uh, shamans, uh, the Don Wilbur, Don Francisco, and Don Juanita. All the Dons. Are, they're, well, they're all Corleone? Kind of, well, Don... So wait, so <laughs> what happens on one of those retreats? Uh, we're going to listen, we're going to sit at their feet and listen to their wisdom, talking about uh, the different... Um, the the lineage itself and their spiritual beliefs about this is um, like traveling with the Dalai Lama. Yeah, yeah, basically. We Did learned, you go to a mountaintop? And yeah, yeah, we roast do. a goat. I I hope so wow. with a little feta on the side. I'm I'm so jealous. <laughs> Some olives sounds good I never, to me. <laughs> it's, yeah, and that's what we're going to be doing. What are you going to be doing in that's the Bahamas? That's very, very unusual. Yeah, I it can't is. top that. You know what's really cool? My cousin, who's who's British, 
and we don't get to see each other very often. She's actually going to room with me. So we're the two of us are going to do it. We do yoga, we do Tai Chi. We're going to be visiting the different uh, temples and all of the kind of spiritual places. And Well, your you. turkey will be right here sitting <laughs> next to you next okay. month uh, when we Thank talk you, about turkey. all things holiday related. This is Air Hamptons with Bridget and Bill. That's Jim Turner. He's Take playing us out. Us out. Oh. Uh, because we're both really good at ignoring anyone frantically signaling wrap it up. This is Air Hamptons with Bridget and Bill. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Yeah, no, thanks, guys. We improv. <laughs>